What's up, Fabrication Nation? So I've been working on the Bibster, trying to get caught up on that thing, really. I mean, kind of the stuff that I've been working on ties in with last week's video, uh, just finishing up those parts. So I didn't really have much to film. And so I was like, you know what? What am I gonna do for this Friday's video? And I was like, I had a bunch of people ask me about the roll bender. So it's kind of, and it's, it's Friday fool, you need this tool but kind of not. But we're gonna go over the roll bender. So this is the infamous Harbor Freight roll bender. Just gonna go over a couple things that I like about it, some things I've already changed, and some things I'm going to change. So right off the bat, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think this is the best bang for your buck when it comes to roll benders, but that doesn't mean that I feel like it's the best on the market, even with upgrades. So don't get that twisted. But I think if you're kind of like me, uh, in your home garage, occasionally gonna need to roll some tube, you know, I think I might need to roll tube maybe, um, you know, once every couple years or something, depending on what kind of project I'm working on. So I don't really need the fanciest of roll benders. I just need one that's gonna get the job done in a very accurate and efficient way. So now that that's out of the way, let's kind of take a look at what we got here. So the Harbor Freight unit comes with a wheel. I'm guessing it's about a 24 inch wheel. Uh, some of them just come with a hand crank that goes around. I haven't used one of those, so I don't really know uh, if it's easier or harder. I really like the wheel itself. You can kind of get some leverage on this thing and pull and whatnot. If you're not familiar with these things, I'll show you kind of how it works. It's got three dies. The Harbor Freight one comes with three sets of dies, so it comes with a one inch, a one and a half, and a two inch. Which is weird because I won't ever use the two inch. I don't do much two inch stuff. Unless, of course, I do build like a trophy truck style setup at some point, which is on my list, but the way builds are going, it may not be anytime soon. But the one and the one and a half, I'll definitely use the one and a half inch stuff is what I use on the Bibster. Uh, in the last video. One of the things I did right off the bat was I kind of changed it up right from the store. Uh, the bushings themselves aren't wide enough and you have a lot of play in here on these uh, dies, more so than what you see right here. So what I did was these little washers in here, they're actually on the outside when you get them. So I took them, moved them on the inside because they were about the right size and then just put some washers that I already had on the outside. So you can see there's a washer on either side Kind of takes up some of that play. I did that on the front and the back one. Now that little mod I did right from the get because I knew that taking out some of that play was something I wanted to do. The second mod I did on this thing I didn't know I needed to do until I got to working with it and it failed on me pretty quick. And that was on this wheel itself. And you probably hear that. It's like some slag inside the tube. So I guess I gotta listen to that forever. But anyway, these things come with these like little set screws. So the wheel comes with one and then the upper die, which is the actual die that rolls the tubing comes with uh, three of them. So very quickly they failed. You try to tighten them up. They either work their way loose or it would end up just pushing the threads right back out of the casting, um, just stripping them right out. And so you'd be rolling this thing and the next thing you know, the tube itself wouldn't roll. So what I did was I just drilled through the entire die and shaft. So hopefully you can see, there's actually some grade eight bolts. They just go all the way through it on this side and on that side. And then I just put like a nylon nut, so it's not super tight, but it kind of locks it in there. And then I end up doing the same thing on the wheel itself. Just got one bolt that goes through, all the way through the other side, goes right through the shaft. And so far, so good. I've not had any issues with that yet, 
and I've put some pretty serious strain on this thing. So basically you got two lower dies, tubing rolls across this, you have an upper die that actually spins with the wheel. And then this upper die is adjustable with this worm gear. So you can kind of crank this thing down or up depending on what you need to do. And so the idea is that tubing just goes right through the center here. And then as you crank that down, it kind of puts a little bit of a bow in the center and then you just roll it through the entire tube. You crank it down a little bit more, you roll it again, crank it down a little bit more, you roll it again. You, you get the idea of how it works. Next thing you know, after working it for a while, you get this nice, clean, smooth radius. So let's talk about some of the issues this thing has. Well, first of all, these are, if you find them on sale, they're like 150 bucks, 160 bucks, very affordable. Some of the ones that are very similar to it um, start at around like 500 bucks. So keep that in mind. Now, some of the issues with this one is that if you want to do some really thick wall tubing, if you're in the off-road scene or um, just doing some thick wall stuff, so like on this one, I rolled inch and a half chromoly. I think it was 065 wall, so it's a very thin wall, and I could get the job done with this relatively easy. I mean, I didn't have to go to the gym the next day because I got my workout in, but it was relatively easy. Now, if you're doing the off-road stuff for the really thick wall, big tubing, you're not gonna be able to get it done. A couple reasons why, the lower dies aren't far enough apart. So if you look, the distance between the two lower dies is only about 10 inches, 10 or 12 inches. Um, some of the higher end models, the actual frame piece kind of comes down and goes out. Some of them are adjustable. You can kind of move those dies around depending on what you need. And what that does, it allows this upper die to get more leverage on the tube because there's a larger distance between them. I would think that it's probably also easier on the bearings. It's easier on the worm gear. It's kind of easier all the way around because you're, you got leverage on your side. But the good thing about that is that there's companies out here that make stuff to modify these for a reasonably, for a reasonable price. Now we'll go ahead and put a disclaimer out there. This video is not sponsored by either Harbor Freight or the company I'm about to talk about. But there's a company out there called Swag Off-Road. Uh, they're pretty well known for making um, parts to upgrade stuff that's cheaper. Let's put it like that. So you can buy something that's cheaper. They sell stuff that's gonna upgrade that and make it a good piece of equipment. And in the end, you still have less in it than you would be if you bought some larger name brand stuff. So these are some wings that they sell. Uh, you get four of them, two on each side. And I've just got these little plates tacked on here. The, tacks, the plates themselves come with these. And so that plate there is more of a uh, way to position or, or basically space, space these dies because these are made to weld on the outside of this. Basically like that. And then you can see these are welded on. You now have three holes. You got one there, one there, and one there to put this shaft through that holds this die. So you could use it in the stock location. You can move it out here a little bit, or you can move it way out here on both ends. And you now have leverage on your side. Very simple but effective fix for this thing obviously i hadn't put them on there yet but uh i've been around these things enough i actually got a buddy of mine that has this exact setup and uh, i've been around some of the other ones too and that's exactly what they do so i know that it'll work uh well once i do it they claim half half the amount of resistance so um it would be twice as easy as i did the tubing that i did if i were to use that now the downfall to spreading those dies out is you have a little more waste. So for instance, when you're rolling tubing on this current setup, um, you can only roll the tubing until the end of it is on this die. Any more than that, then it's gonna fall off, right? So from here to the center of that die, 
it's still going to be a straight piece. So if you're trying to get a curve, that little straight piece essentially will be a wasted piece. You have to cut it off. It won't be part of what you're doing. Um, with these swag off-road wings, it's going to basically extend those waste pieces out. And remember, as you roll this thing, you're going to have a waste piece on either side. So if you got six inches on this side, you're going to have six inches on that side because you can't, you can only roll it so far. You put these on there and now you've got, you know, you've extended it to 10 or 12 inches of waste on either end. And that is if you don't need it to be bent. The piece I did on the bivster, I actually needed about a three or four inch straight piece, so it worked out for me. All right, so that kind of explains the wings. One of the other things they do as well that is kind of tough on this is that this worm gear, you can see mine, I've got it uh, pretty lubed up with some anti C's. Depending on what you're doing, you can only put so much tension on this thing, so you're only gaining so much bend on every roll. So for example, when I was doing the chrome molly, um, I would kind of give it one full sweep and then maybe go back and then I would crank this thing down maybe like a quarter of a turn. And really a quarter of a turn because that's all I could get out of it. You know, it, it's super tough to kind of turn this piece and you really don't want to put too much strain on it because then you're going to start uh, marring up the threads and that sort of stuff. You really want to creep up on it. And so I put a quarter of a turn in it, then I have to roll that thing two more times, a quarter of a turn, roll it two more times, and you kind of get the gist. It's a, it's a kind of a lengthy process. Now Swag Off-Road also makes an adapter that replaces this whole upper piece and extends it up here and then you put a bottle jack in there. And so now you're using a hydraulic bottle jack versus an, like an acne thread style setup. And so you just put a couple pumps on that bottle jack, kind of roll it through a couple more pumps and it really makes the job a lot easier here and here. So the wings help it as far as your muscle to turn this thing. The bottle jacks help it as far as your muscle to tighten this thing down. I'm really hoping that all this makes sense to you guys because um, there's one other thing, one other option that they also uh, have for this piece and it is making it motorized. So you can basically get a pipe threader, a motorized pipe threader from Harbor Freight, I believe, uh, that replaces this wheel. And so they sell you another shaft and you put this pipe threader on there and it's kind of, you know, keyed and the pipe threader stays still. And then you can basically just push a button and it rolls this thing through a couple pumps on the jack. You put that thing in reverse, you roll that tube back through motorized, it makes things way quicker and way easier on you. So I don't know that I'll go that far on this one. Like I said, I don't use it. Um, I won't use it that often. So I'll probably just put the wings on it for now and then maybe down the road, depending on what kind of build I'm doing, maybe get the bottle jack set up. You know, if I'm doing some big two inch tubing that's thick wall stuff, you, I'm probably gonna need that bottle jack set up. Maybe even the motor I set up, I don't know. So anyway, long story short, $150, $160 for the roller from Harbor Freight. Um, the wings I think are just under a hundred bucks. Not sure how much the rest of the stuff is but i believe on their website they say all in all if you do all the upgrades on this thing you're looking at like 500 bucks for the entire setup which is amazing because you get just a manual setup for 500 bucks from just about every other company that's out there i think swag off road also makes dies for these so i could potentially get the inch and five eighths die that i would need on the rest of the tubing that i use around here um, they also make square tubing dies, flat, flat strips. You can bend flat strips too. So they also make uh, dies where you can bend this kind of stuff and they make it to where you can bend it, you know, like this, which is not that hard to do. Or you can put it in there vertically like this and actually put a radius on it, which would be cool, I guess, if you needed it. All right guys, I hope you dig that. My little review of the Harbor Freight Roll Bender. I think it's gonna work great for me. So far, I've been using it a couple weeks, been a couple tubes. Uh, like I said, I've got some buddies of mine that have them and no issues. So if you're looking at a roll bender, 
may want to consider going that route. I'll drop you a couple links of the upgraded versions that I was talking about so you can kind of take a look at what is out there um, that is priced higher than this setup and then you can kind of understand what I'm talking about when you make the upgrades that it's very similar to what's out there um, that's in the higher price range, I guess. Anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more next week. It's Friday, fool.